What's up everybody, Tom here back at you with another video and this time brought to you by the wonderful White Claw. Ah, that's good. No, I'm just kidding. It's not... Uh, White Claw's not paying me. But, White Claw, if you're listening, if you want some extra advertisement going on, Slide into my DMs. I would love to sponsor you guys because I think you have a terrific product. So, anyway, it's been brought to my attention that there is a controversy with regard to the MoMA. And for those of you who don't know, MoMA is an acronym for Museum of Modern Art. And it's in, it's in the city, New York City. Well, if I say the city, it's pretty obvious I'm talking about New York City. That's what New York City's called. But I understand that I have a lot of people watching my videos from the flyover states. And from some state called California, Calif California, that's what it is, California. Um... And, you know, they might think, oh, the city is L.A. No. So. No. Anyway, the MoMA, it's one of my favorite museums. It's, it's great. They have a lot of classics in there, like Starry Night by Van Gogh. Um, they've got a Dali section. They've got a Duchamp section. They have these different, they had some Maya Darren films in there the other day. Um, who I actually read the book on. And, you know, she's great. The MoMA's a fantastic museum. It's a great uh, way to spend a day if you don't want to spend a lot of money in the city. It's a great place to take a girl if you want her to think that you're smart and sophisticated. It's great. It's a fun time. It's fun to look at the art. It's wonderful. There is a controversy with regards to one of the architects that, um, well, he worked on the MoMA, and he worked on, like, I don't know, dozens, hundreds of other buildings in New York, and, um, his name is not Fred Johnson, because that's the guy from The Expanse. Let me pull this article up. Philip Johnson, that's what it is, not Fred Johnson, Philip Johnson, and, um, yeah, basically, if you've ever been to the MoMA, you walk in, you know, you get your ticket, and then you go up the stairs. And then as you're going up the stairs to the second floor, there's, like, um, a helicopter um, hanging from the ceiling. And then right next to the helicopter, there was this um, thing that said, like, the Fred Johnson room or something. It's in big letters on the wall. It was to honor this guy, Fred Johnson, for being um, a, a great architect who was influential in, 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 in New York architecture and architecture in general, the art um, scene, he, he, he's, he's a big deal. But this is what the article says. MoMA will temporarily cover Philip Johnson's name after architects denounce white supremacist ties. A wall bearing Johnson's name will be covered by an artwork during the run of the exhibition Reconstructions, Architecture and Blackness in America. Um, so... Apparently, this guy, Philip Johnson, has t um, has ties to white supremacists, or had ties. I don't even know if he's still alive anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, when that comes out, MoMA's like, we don't want necessarily to make people uncomfortable by having that name right there when you walk in. So, so they covered it up um, with a, um, it's a, it's a, it's an artwork, um, it kind of looks like a paper, um, but it, but it has to do with uh, with um, reconstruction in America and um, and race. <clears throat> Last November, a group of architects, designers, and artists released an open letter asking the Museum of Modern Art 
and Harvard University to remove Philip Johnson's name from its spaces, citing the glass house designer's allegiance to white supremacist ideologies. Harvard responded swiftly, renaming a private uh, residence Johnson built as a graduate thesis project and referring to the power of institutional naming and the integrity and legitimacy it confers. MoMA, however, has remained notably silent on the issue until now. So, wait, when this got out, Harvard, which also um, had, um, Harvard had a building on their campus um, that was designed by this Philip Johnson fellow, and it was named after him, and they renamed it. They're like, you know, fuck it. But MoMA has not renamed the, uh, it hasn't renamed the foyer area um, that, that it's currently named after. And they're, and they're being silent up until now. Is it righteous to celebrate great work um, and celebrate the men and women who created that work if they do not uphold our values? Not only do they not uphold them, but actually, um, but actually fight against our values, but actually reject our values in favor of something that uh, we we value to be highly negative. Are you allowed to appreciate their work? Is it righteous to celebrate them for their work, or is it or is it better to kind of not? revere these people. It's similar to the Dr. Seuss thing. It's similar to the Dr. Seuss thing where there's this this man who has created something great. Um, but he did many things that were not great. That were very, very bad. And in this case, Philip Johnson had white supremacist ties. Now, it it's even deeper than that as well, though, because, I mean, we all know that in this country, um, at the, after the end of, of slavery um, and Jim Crow, uh, there, um, black people have faced many, many different forms of systemic injustices, um, systemic oppression, systemic subjugation, and a lot of it has to do with zoning, redlining. It was about keeping uh, black people out of thriving communities, communities with strong middle classes, communities with, uh, with, with, with government subsidies. Uh, uh, communities with good public transport, good jobs, and, and keeping those as being white spaces, okay? And this is, I think, part of the issue here because there is, and the, I think the article is going to get into this as well, um, architecture goes part and parcel with where people live, who gets to live there, etc., so, I mean, it's not just as simple as there was a man who built uh, the MoMA who was also a racist. It goes much, much deeper than that. Let's keep going with the article. Last November, a group of architects... Oh, wait, I already read that. In a partial but significant victory in the fight to reckon with Johnson's legacy, the museum has now agreed to cover up Johnson's name temporarily during the run of its current exhibition, Reconstructions, Architecture, and Blackness in America. That seems pretty easy. If you're having, like, if you're having an exhibit about racism in America... then maybe you shouldn't have a racist man's name plastered on the wall for everyone to see as they go to see that. It, it kind of works across, um, across purposes there. So, I mean, like, that just seems obvious, okay? So, to me, 
The question isn't, was it good for MoMA to co temporarily cover up uh, Philip Johnson's name in the MoMA? Um, because that's easy. That's obvious. Like, of course you will do that. Of course you don't want that in everybody's faces as they walk up those stairs, walk past that helicopter, and go into the exhibit about reconstruction and racism in America. That's not the question here. The question is, should MoMA get rid of it, and should they be doing a lot more to actually promote black architecture, black business, black spaces? Um, and honestly, I think they should. Instead of seeing Johnson's name on the wall at the start of the show, visitors will find an artwork created collaboratively by the Black Reconstruction Collective, BRC, a nonprofit founded by the 10 participants included in the exhibition. Emmanuel Admaso, Jermaine Barnes, Suku Cook, J. Yolanda Daniels, Felicia Davis, Mario Gooden, Walter Hood, O, o Olalikin Jefus. All right, I've definitely pronounced that wrong, but you know I did my best. V. Mitch McEwen and Amanda Williams. This is a quote. We invited the artists in the Black Reconstruction Collective to join us in discussing concerns regarding Philip Johnson's legacy. A spokeswoman, a spokesperson for MoMA, told Hyperallergic. We accepted their exhibition design proposal to install the first work of art that visitors will experience, a 10 by 10 foot group work that introduces the exhibition over the gallery's exterior signage adjacent to the entrance for the run of the reconstructions. And that's what's actually covering up Philip Johnson's name. The work is a denim textile printed with the BRC's manifesting statement, a collective text that manif... Um, the work is a denim textile printed with the BRC's manifesting statement, a collective text that imagines the future of black architects, designers, and artists, and declares a commitment to the work of reconstruction in America. See, this is about, this is about trying to upend and reverse the um, systemic suppression of black voices of black architects in America, okay, about promoting them. And, you know, to me, there's almost a little bit of poetry in putting uh, the statement, which declares this on top of uh, Philip Johnson's name in the MoMA. MoMA also told Hyperallergic that the museum is undertaking a, quote, rigorous research initiative to explore in full the allegations against Johnson and gather all available information. So they're kind of saying, look, we don't want to jump to conclusions here. We're going to do a full investigation, and only then will we make a decision what to do. Which, I mean, you know, fair. Like, you don't want somebody to just be scrubbed from... Uh, not scrubbed from history, his buildings are always going to be there, but you don't necessarily want to jump into something like this without doing your diligence. So, you know, that is fair enough. V. Mitch McEwen, an assistant professor at the Princeton University School of Architecture, who is included in the exhibition, told Hyperallergic that MoMA is in denial of its own history. And this is something I believe. MoMA wants to say, oh, we're not racist, you know, we're very progressive. We support black communities, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, you are an institution which has promoted racism, promoted uh, redlining, uh, su suppress black voices for your entire history. And now you want to say, oh, well, hey, for the past 10 years, we've had, you know, really woke tweets on Twitter. Um, and this guy is saying that that's not enough. That, you know, you have to actually 
You have to actually grapple with your past. You have to actually do something to counteract the negative effects of your past actions. That, that, I, that's, what, that's what V. Mitch McEwen is saying, and I agree with that. We met with Glenn Lowry about the gallery name on January 6th as white supremacists were storming the Capitol. He said, MoMA didn't create the problem, McEwen said. He said, MoMA didn't create the problem, McEwen said. This is a McEwen quote. We met with Glenn Lowry about the gallery name on January 6th as white supremacists were storming the Capitol. He said, MoMA didn't create the problem, McEwen said. The fact is, when it comes to racist urban planning policies in the 20th century and a deeply Eurocentric, anti-black archive of American culture, MoMA under white supremacist Philip Johnson did largely create the problem. It innovated white supremacy in architecture. Now, as far as white supremacy in architecture, I don't uh, know all the uh, sources. It's definitely something that has a strong history and, 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 and structural um, influence in America. There's so much stuff you can read about it. I haven't read nearly enough or any, but I know, I know that it's there. And an institution like MoMA would have contributed to that, would have, would have, would have to some degree created it, exacerbated it. And I believe if this is something that MoMA wants to just say, it happened in the past, and we don't we don't agree with that anymore or sweep it under the rug but i mean even if they denounce philip johnson like that is not enough because you are still part of an institution which has created these structures which has exacerbated these institutions so to to to, to really make amends to 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 really show people that you're doing the right thing to actually help mitigate the effects of these institutions you have to do something proactive you can't just say oh well you know we've changed now the legacy of that innovation this is still a quote remains uh, strong today with a department that has not one single black staff member, curator, or full-time employee. McEwen added. Other than the luminaries of guests and visiting advisors, the only black person I saw working in the MoMA design throughout the whole two-year process of the exhibit was one art handler. The white supremacy, the white supremacist legacy of Johnson lives on and it will not wither on its own accord he's saying the moma is not is not um fulfilling its obligation to the black community which it incurred by partaking in these racist institutions they are not doing nearly enough they have an entirely white staff um they're not doing anything positive for the black community for black architecture uh, etc. And if they don't do something proactive, then it will continue to persist. If you don't do something proactive, racism will continue to persist, okay? So this is something I hear people say a lot and I agree with it. It's not enough to not be racist. You have to be anti-racist. And the reason for this is because racism is structurally built into American society. And probably European as well, but I know less about that. Definitely American society. It's part of the structure of our society. So if you are simply not racist, ooh, I have a black friend, 
then that is not actually helping to diminish these structures because the structures will persist. They don't care about you. They will go on without you. You have to try to dismantle them or create new pro-black structures. Johnson worked at MoMA for nearly six decades and founded the museum's Department of Architecture, which dedicated its exhibition space to the architect as a tribute in 1984. His name also included, his name is also included in the title of the museum's chief curator of architecture and design. While his contributions uh, to the field are widely known and praised, Johnson's racist past is often ignored, despite the fact that his, quote, commitment to white supremacy was significant and consequential. The Johnson study group, an online organization leading efforts to document the architect's racist views, wrote in their letter last year, the American modernist was affiliated with the Nazi party in the 1930s, translating and disseminating its propaganda. Later years, he justified his associations as a homoerotic fascination with Nazi uniforms. Let me read that again. The American modernist, referring to Philip Johnson, was affiliated with the Nazi party in the 1930s, translating and disseminating its propaganda. Decades later, he justified his association as a homoerotic fascination with Nazi uniforms. So he was a Nazi sympathizer. He was a very respected architect. And he translated German propaganda, Nazi propaganda, into American so that they could disseminate it in America and propagate it to Americans. And then he said, oh, no, 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 I'm not a Nazi, bro. I'm not a Nazi. I just have a thing for their uniforms. Have you ever seen an Aryan in an SS guard outfit? Oh, it makes me so hard. That was his, um, is anybody buying that? No. His racist anti-black views have been extensively documented, and during his tenure at MoMA, the Johnson Study Group notes, not a single work by any black architect or designer was included in the collection. You see... You see, this is something that is going to continue to happen for decades and decades because of how deeply entrenched racist structures are in America. We are going to find people who we revere, like Dr. Seuss and like Philip fucking Johnson, who were horrible fucking racist people, who hated Jews, okay, who hated gay people, who were just fucking shitbags. Fucking Kevin Spacey. Raping kids. Date raping kids. And how do we approach their art? Okay, because their art is still good. The art is still good. Usual suspects? Cat in the fucking hat. These are classics. These are things that actually have value, that actually ha have positive effects on our society, regardless of the politics or how shitty of a person the person who created them are. And they are part of our past. So, so what's a girl to do? Do you scrub them from the history books? Do you put disclaimers um, on all of the buildings that they designed, on all of the books that they wrote, 
on all of the movies that they starred in, on all of their comedy specials, on all of the movies they produced, in their New York Times articles, in their cakes that they bake. On the weed that they grow. On their beer cans. On their sculptures. Do we completely scrub them from the history books? No. I don't think. I personally do not think that an answer that is satisfying to me is to scrub these people from history, is to scrub their art from history, because at that point, if you just say, oh, never happened, you're not grappling with it. You are not proactively fighting against their ideology. You are trying to pretend that it never happened. But it did happen. It did happen. And the effects can still be felt today. So you don't scrub them from the history book. I, to me, maybe this is just like woke centrism, enlightened centrism. Maybe it's, I don't know, just obvious. But to me, you separate, you separate the art from the artist. You appreciate the art for its artistic merit, for the techniques employed by the artist, for how it contributes to its art form, you know, for, for all the different things that you would focus on when analyzing art, criticizing art, and to me, especially if the art is positive in some way, um, then appreciate it for that. And, and just for how, how the techniques were employed and, and that kind of thing. It, but you don't have to necessarily idolize or put on a pedestal the the creator of such great art like and you can analyze it separate from that i think i mean you know can can understanding um more about the context of of the, what was going on with the artist what the artist believe can that kind of add something to to their artwork with as opposed to not knowing that you know, I would say yes, um, but um, even so, even if you're understanding where the artist was coming from, you still are not revering them or putting them on a pedestal. You, you see what I mean? So I think that it's about walking, you know, on that kind of idea, which is that... You can separate the art from the artist. You can you can look at the art and and and, and um, analyze it and critique it for what it is, and even bring into some of the context of, of the artist who created it, and love that art. I think it's amazing. But you don't have to think that the person that created it is amazing. And you can have harsh, fucking criticisms of the artist at the same time as loving their art. I think you can. But then again, I mean, look at me. What the fuck do I know? So if you ask me, if I'm the MoMA owner or if I'm a manager at MoMA, I put my money where my mouth is. I start creating black grants. Well, first of all, I take the fucking name, the Philip Johnson name, off of the fucking foyer entryway in the MoMA. You don't need that in front of everybody's face as they walk in. The name of a racist fucking Nazi. You don't need it. So take that out. But you don't just take it out. You don't end there because at that point, all you're doing is pretending that it never happened, but it did happen. So 
what you do is you get, we're talking about a million dollar, a multi-million dollar institution museum, okay? They can provide grant money, okay, for black architects to work on the MoMA. Fuck, last year, the fucking MoMA was closed down for like six months or something, maybe longer, for renovations. Why are they not hiring black architects to lead those kinds of endeavors, to lead those kinds of changes to their building? You want to have more black input in the architecture of your institution. Okay, so pay them handsomely, and while you're at it, I mean, first of all, that already happened, so that ship is sailed. They already did the renovations on MoMA. Why not create a grant for a black architect to improve the architecture in uh, poor black communities, to improve the parks in poor black communities, to... Or not even poor, just any black communities. You, you, you just want to promote blackness. You want to promote black success. You want to promote the idea of black success. And you do that with money. Okay? So, you know, hot take. Support black artists. Don't support me. I'm white. I'm half Jewish. I'm good. Don't subscribe to my channel. Don't rate, comment, and hit the notification bell on my channel, go do that to a black artist. Help support black success monetarily with money. You can't scrub them from the history books. You can't say, oh, I'm a woke individual and I support black people. I have a BLM t-shirt and uh, blah, 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 blah. No. It's about being proactive, it's about supporting black people, it's about supporting black communities, it's about supporting black artists, architectures, and structures. We want to create structures of black power in this country, okay? Because we already are in a country which is built on a structure of white power. Now, I know there's gonna be pretty much zero people who agree with me on this because I mean even the people I agree with on, 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 on value and the direction that we want to go are going to disagree with me on you know my, 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 my tactical ideas um, they're going to say well you, you know you, you, you can't do it that way you have to do it this way to get to the goal that we both share there's going to be people who don't share my goals but who I still broadly agree with who disagree with me and that's and that's fine you know those people fuck I'm probably wrong compared to those people then there's also other people who are just fucking shit bags shit bag racists who say oh well you know the free market whoever's the best for the job should do it well guess what there is no free quote-unquote free market in this respect because we're in a situation right now where the structures of power, the structures of success are built to favor white people and to keep black people down. Um, so the way that you break those structures is not by just saying we're not doing that anymore. It's by you have to promote the opposite. You have to promote blackness. You have to promote black success. You do that with money. You do that with research grants, with fucking architecture grants, whatever it is. And yeah, fuck it. Say this is only for black people. Find the best fucking black architect who applies for your grant. And, 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 and pay them handsomely to do their fucking job and grow blackness, black communities, black power, black structures in this country. Okay, it's not enough to say we don't do white supremacy anymore. It's about promoting 
black structures of power. Okay? That's it. As far as I'm concerned, I'm sure nobody agrees with me. Which is fine. Fucking shit on me in the comments. I know you guys love to do that. And if anybody, um, you know, is actually also an ally and wants to have a real discussion, I'm here for it, okay? If I'm off base, if I'm saying things that are completely wrong, tell me. I want to know. Because I want to improve uh, myself as well so that I can be as much of an ally as I possibly can be. And that's where I'm going to end the video. Thanks for watching. Support black artists. Don't subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to black channels.